Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated. It's Mary Jane, and let's talk about Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta Season 3, Episode 2. It seems like Kiyomi is all over Bow Wow, and she is really threatened by any other women, and it's not going to work out like that you cannot be that jealous and that possessive it's cute in the beginning but after a while someone will feel like they're locked up in chains and then they'll go off and do their own thing anyway because you're already up too tight but we already see that Bow Wow and Kiyomi Leslie are not together anymore and Bow Wow's out with another girl he's chilling so maybe you know Kiyomi was right she was trying to be possessive and hold down and hold on to Bow Wow because she knew there were so many women that was out there trying to get with him and so basically she tried to shoot her shot and stay with him but it didn't work out at all she didn't know what type of man she had she had a man that's been a star since his whole freaking life his whole career he has seen women in and out upside down all different color shapes and sizes with some of them groupies some of them would do anything he asked them to do you know he done seen it all so therefore he can really just easily replace somebody because I don't know if Bow Wow can even fall in love or love a woman at this time and point in, in his age you know I think he's still young he's still immature and he's an icon he's a legend he's young black successful rich popular so it's going to be really hard for him to settle down unless some woman actually 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 um you know snatch his heart like he i mean snatch his heart where he falls in love and we know jay-z been out here in these streets for a long time but somebody snatched his heart and he was faithful but he was unfaithful too as well to beyonce so it's a it's a game of craps when you playing around with bow wow and want to be his woman so basically if you whip bow wow and you want to be a rapper you want to be an entertainer you want to be an actress at least you know stay with him long enough so you can get your career jumping your career bumping or something because i don't think he values values the relationship he has with women because there's just so many women that are throwing their self at him and then he's seen a lot of women with no self-respect too as well so he's probably just like you know he probably thinks every other woman is just like every other woman they're not different Ugh, that's a hard thing to be with to be with a young successful rich guy like Bow Wow that's in the media and women are just throwing their self at him you have to have some type of self-control and know why you're in a relationship with him, why you want to be with him, and then just trust them and hope for the best because his, it doesn't seem like it's going to work out because Bow Wow has a new chick already. So it's like crazy. So, you know, it is what it is. But one day, someone's going to snatch Bow Wow's heart. And he's going to be faithful. He's going to tie the knot one day. But right now, he just ain't ready. And having a girlfriend and being in a relationship is just a title. And I don't know if he actually just used Kiyomi for this show. Act like she was his girlfriend, his girlfriend. And then have, you know, little mama Masika chase him around where it starts arguments and fights between him and her. And it just makes for good TV. So she could have been used from the beginning. Who knows? People are saying that Kiyomi is using Bow Wow. But why, why would she not ask him for help? if she's dating him and she's in the entertainment business and he's been an entertainer for his whole life really so let's move on to johnny blaze at the ivory acting up fighting and she is out there talking about she wants to fight she's ready to fight she's like a hound she is ready for it and then she gets on stage and she performs like ain't nothing happened the song was nice she does sound good she does look good i did like her in white but you know she's really really unprofessional she has not learned her lesson yet and i don't know what it's going to take for johnny blaze to realize how important her career is her career is if she doesn't care about her career no one else is going to and you know deb has tried to care for her and, and about her career for a long time it just like seems like you know like johnny blaze said that sometimes she's her own worst enemy when it comes to her career and then on top of that she don't want to be the bad guy so that's why she hired deb and then on top of that she wanted deb to protect her because she's trying to she's kind of like blaming deb because you know stevie J and britney just britney or some other chick was with him that was there at the ivory and we know um what's his name steven J goes to the ivory he goes there he's been there he performed with 
Kaya. So he's been there. Mama Deb's been there too as well, watching Kaya perform with Stevie J. So I don't know if, if Deb knew that they was going to be there. Did she warn her? Did she let her know? Because one thing about your client, when you know your client, she got beef and she got enemies out here and you know she's going to turn up. You know, she has to be forewarned. You know, that's a, like, she's not like the regular type of client. She's a regular, she's a client that has, <laughs> has emotional breakdowns and can be very violent at any any drop of a hat she can be violent especially when she's around her enemies and she can't control her emotions so you're trying to make sure the whole environment around her is okay but you can't do that you can't stop everybody from coming to an event to come somewhere because she has beef with somebody so right now johnny blaze is blaming um deb saying it's her fault she's supposed to protect her and then she fires so he goes you fired and Deb was like, what, you firing me? And, you know, Johnny Blaze is all yelling, screaming all up in her face, just being mad disrespectful to her elders when, you know, um, Deb didn't do anything to her. What she should have did was like, you know what, Deb, I got to leave. I got to go. I did one song, but I will talk to you in the morning. I just need to go. But she was erratic, yelling, screaming, still drinking. It's just like, yo, you know, this behavior that you're showing on TV, it's going to be hard for anybody to want to manage you, Johnny. And I feel bad for you because you went through a ma you went through a lot of shit you've been traumatized you've been abused you've been raped you've been slow sold into sex slavery and all types of stuff you know so it's just it, it's just really hard you know I think you ultimately have to work on your mental before you're able to work on your music and be around people and be in, in environments where um that you could be in a negative environment, but you can also change that negative environment, make it a positive environment, but you're not able to do that. You just go from zero to a hundred. So I really think that you need to get some help. You need to get some counseling because you are talented. You, cl you can play the piano. You can sing, you can dance. And you can write music too as well, but your your negative your negative components overshadows what you are really worth because of what you've been through. So it's so easy for you to show your negativity because you have to show negativity because you've been abused. You have to defend yourself. You had to fight. You don't see people get shot and killed in front of you. You don't lost your loved ones. You don't had a lot of shit happen to you where you really need to get some help really need to get some counseling to work through these issues that way you won't sabotage your future because you're letting your past and what you've been through and always have to be on guard and always have to fight you know um jeopardize your future and your career and the business so it is what it is and deb is like i can't believe she fired me yes she did she fired you and i was yeah i was just like damn deb is like and you know deb you know owns part of she went and to, you know, owning the nightclub, you know, um, part owner of the ivory. And it's a bad look. There was glass all breaking. You, all you hear was just glass breaking. Who was down there just breaking glass? Like, shit. Throwing glasses. Gla I'm like, damn. So Shania, <laughs> Ayana, and her father, DJ Hurricane, and also Kiyomi, they got the hell up out of there. They was gone. They bounced. They was just like, this was just too dangerous. This is just too much. And I was just like, damn, mm -mm -mm. then Bow Wow was at home um, watching IG and watching Johnny go off and act up and act crazy, talking about he's glad he didn't come because Debbie Vince be off the change because of the clients that she have where <laughs> people are not protected. <laughs> you know, people ain't safe. Anything can go down. Anything can happen. He's cracking up. He's making fun of Johnny, which is wrong, too, as well, because he knows that she got issues. You got some issues, too, Bow Wow. But only thing is you can hide yours better than Johnny can hide hers and so then here comes Kiyomi she's running up to her man laying up on the couch are they laying up in Bow Wow's mom's house <laughs> what is really going on and so basically she was telling um Bow Wow what happened what went down that night and she heard that he used to go out with her he used to mess with her he was like nah we just knew each other since high school we had a little fling it wasn't nothing it wasn't serious don't even worry about it. that's dead it that's the past and she was like all right you know and Kiyomi was like if I see anybody in your DM I see any women up on you flirting with you you know I'm gonna get mad you know I'm gonna get jealous and all this other stuff and basically you know she's she just wearing a heart on her sleeve where he's not even that possessive of you. But, you know, he did say make sure she wears something beautiful to New York to go to um, um, 
and JD being inducted into the Hall of Fame, um, song, songwriters Hall of Fame or whatever. And she was like, I'm going to need some money. I'm going to need some, I'm going to need a couple of racks. And he was like, huh, here's $20. So basically we already know Kiyomi doesn't have that money, that type of money to go to, to be, to go to New York and be in the, and be a guest at, you know, the songwriters Hall of Fame event. We see Neil Diamond there. You see all them famous people there, you know, she don't have that type of money like that, so, um, basically, Bow Wow's gonna have to buy her a dress, because he's on a different bracket, he has a different lifestyle, and if he wants his girlfriend to be a part of his lifestyle, he's gonna, tr he's gonna have to help her out with that, because he don't, if she spends her own money, she might have to go to Forever 21, or something like that, or Charlotte Ruse, <laughs> and get an outfit so basically he know he got paid for the dress and get it made and whatever and so she get her dress made and the dress is okay it's red it's see-through it's glitter i didn't like the bot the feathery part of the bottom of the dress but other than that it was a nice dress i wish it was a little bit longer or shorter either way it goes but anyways bow wow paid for her to get a custom-made dress and get it fitted so we see what's going on so you know Bow Wow is taking care of her because he has the money and she's a part of his lifestyle. Like a guy like him, he wants any woman that's on his shoulder to look drop dead gorgeous. And he knows what it takes to look drop dead gorgeous in Hollywood because he's been in Hollywood his whole life. So he knows what to do. So we have that situation. Then we have Deb. She meets up with the brat. And basically, she tells brat that, you know, she's done with Johnny. And she learned her lesson. And, you know, like, she's moving forward. And then she was like, but she fired me. So we ain't even talking. And so, you know, brat was like, she fired you. She got a lot of nerve. Does she know who you worked with? You worked with Nicki Minaj. You worked with French Montana. You worked with, you know, um, <laughs> your son. <laughs> you worked with Gucci you worked with so many different people and they're all stars and you could have made her a star I don't know about all that but um so the brat was like it's her loss and so basically the brat is happy that Deb is not working with Johnny anymore so it is what it is and we got Johnny she's going to 95.5 streets for an interview and basically She's like, I wish everything didn't went the, didn't go down the way it did go down. I wish everything didn't happen the way it happened because I didn't think that I was going to end up firing Deb. So I think she's kind of regretting firing Deb. And she really likes Deb and she loves her and she wants to have a relationship with her. But, you know, she don't know if she's they ever going to kindle their relationship. And right now she's not going to look for a new manager. She's going to stay solo. <laughs> she's gonna stay so low and basically she's afraid that the interviewer at the radio station is going to ask her is Deb still her manager and when he does she's gonna say no comment and she's going to say <laughs> that you know Deb's a beautiful person and she's a wonderful person but you know Johnny also talks about she has three EPs out and she's working with Fetty Wap and that's Masika's you know baby daddy and Masika got an issue with Johnny because Johnny was calling or Johnny was DMing, you know, Fetty Wap when she was pregnant with Fetty Wap's baby. And then on top of that, Johnny already answered that question. She was like, I was, you know, I stay up late at night. And the reason why I get features and songs and things like that, because I stalk people on their DMs and I hit them up. And she also said that she hit up Fetty Wap, but she knew he had a girlfriend. So she didn't fall, she didn't fall up on him and he didn't fall up on her. So now he's single and she don't know if they're going to be ready to mingle. But we see that's going to be a problem because you know how Masika is. And Masika said she's been keeping this in the back of her head that, you know, Johnny was texting or DMing, you know, Fetty back when she was pregnant. And that shit is over with. You ain't with Fetty no more. Fetty done cheated on you and cheated on every woman he's been with. So why would you even harbor any type of malice towards Johnny because it makes no sense because your man from the jump street was no good and wasn't faithful with you and had babies and you had your baby at the same time he was having other babies and he got too many babies to really care about you because he got a lot of baby mamas so Masika missed me with that bullshit <laughs> 
So we have that situation. So it is what it is. And we have JD. He's doing an interview with, on the Ricky Smiley show with the brat. And basically, he lets us know that he met the brat in Chicago on the Oprah Winfrey show. And since then, they've been kicking it and doing it. And he's been in the business for 25 years. He's, he's the first one to ever do a grand tour to have all of his artists that was ever signed to So So Deaf actually do a tour. The tour has been, I think, put on hold. But I hope the tour does come through. And I hope it does come to Boston or it comes to Rhode Island. Island or it comes to New Jersey, come somewhere where I can go so I can see, so I can be a part of the history making shit, you know? So we have that situation and basically, you know, we get Bow Wow tells us that he sold more records than anybody on So So Deaf still to today. So, you know, Bow Wow got to brag with his ass. So we have that situation go on. So it's cool. And to see the brat and also Jermaine Dupree still together, still cool, still working together. It's very nice. So we move on to, you know, Ayana. She is doing her photo shoot. She's in charge of her fashions and she didn't get help from her father this time. She's put her money on the line and basically she let Kiyomi be one of her models. Kiyomi is an hour late. Supposedly Kiyomi said that she took the wrong exit. So the fashion looks okay, but I would think that that Ayana will have more fashions for people that are plus size too as well to have skinnies, have a spread of skinny models and a and the spread of plus size model. Ayana is not a plus size woman. She's just thick. But you would think that she would have that because it seems her father's plus size. I guarantee you her mother's plus size. I'm just assuming. And her girlfriend's not that skinny too as well. And she's not that skinny, but she don't have no plus size clothes being displayed in this magazine but anyways so some of the clothes are not fitting the models correctly so she gotta go get safety pins hopefully when you buy her clothes you don't have to go get safety pins yourself that's not a good look so anyways you know she, she calls her father up and she really didn't want to call him up because she wants to be independent and he brings her the safety pins so she's safety pinning these dresses together and then once you know Kiyomi tries on her dress she has under boots that a side boot she has under boot her boots are too big for the the dress so I guess there was no measurement for you know Kiyomi or the other models there was just dresses made and they were thrown into them so the photo shoot went well you know Kiyomi, Kiyomi's there and you know they do the photo shoot and Ayana was like I'm going to address her but she doesn't address her about being late but then Shania comes Shania she comes through looking all pretty with her nice little self and Amy's there too as well looking all cute too so they all sit there having a conversation and that's when Kiyomi brings up Johnny and that incident and she was like yeah I heard that Bow Wow I know Bow used to mess with her or whatever and I talked to him about it in my mind I'm just going to think that he hasn't been with nobody else but me it's really childish. She's young, but she's also with a childish and young guy too as well. And so we have that situation go on. It was like, mm, okay. <laughs> and so, you know, Shania and, you know, Ayana is like, Bawa ain't never been faithful. He's always cheated. He's always been out here in these streets. So, you know, maybe it'll be different for Kiyomi. And it seems like it's not, you know, her being very out there and being on him and being present and his life so maybe he won't cheat or whatever and then um Kiyomi lets them know that she's going to New York too as well and you know Ayana was like I right, okay Shania was like oh so he invited you wow so you he's he's a little bit serious about you that's how they're looking at the situation I'm like damn so we have they don't think that it's gonna work out they don't think that she might be a gold digger she might be a gold digger she might not be a gold digger what Ayana and, Shai, and, and Shania is thinking but um, they know Bow Wow was not faithful and he hasn't been faithful to anybody he has dated. Um, so <laughs> moving on from that situation, have their little girls talk. And so I guess the ladies are bonding more. And plus, Kiyomi wants to bond more with Ayana and be and build a relationship with the ladies, too, as well, because they are a part of Bow Wow's life and they know Bow. So it's cool, especially she should really want to know Shania because she's really close to Bow. So. We have that situation. It's all good. Then we have Masika. Masika shows up looking all good. Her makeup is all flawless. She looks so different than she used to look on Love and Hip Hop, you know, Hollywood. And she's there. She's in the studio singing. It sounds all right. Really couldn't hear what was going on. But she's here to work on her career. And Atlanta, this is where all her friends are at. This is where all her connections is at. And plus, who's walking in the studio? None other than Miss Deb. And so, you know, uh, Masika was like, can you be my manager? I need a manager. Everybody's here. 
I know Bawa, I know JD, I know everybody. <laughs> and, you know, Deb is like, nah, I can't be right now. I can help you. I can steer you in the right direction. But right now, I just need some time for myself because she's been running around like crazy with Johnny. She done just got fired by uh, 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 an E-list artist. So she's feeling a certain type of way. And also, you know that... Um, Johnny got into it with Brandon too as well. And she dissed him and kind of like fired him <laughs> too. And so now Masika realizing it's because of Johnny. Because Johnny's really shady. Johnny's in all this trouble. She's negative. And Masika, and, but you know, Deb is like, you know, Masika is a, tr is a troublemaker too. She got a lot of drama going on. But I think Masika is less drama than, you know, Johnny and Masika will actually show up and be on time and do what she's supposed to do. And if you're professional and you do right by Masika, Masika's going to do right by you. She has a little bit more of a clear and stable mind and a professional mind too as well because she's been in business and real estate and she, supposedly she owned luxury condos in Hollywood. That's the story. I don't know. But, you know, and she's also graduated from college. Just because you got to graduate from college doesn't mean that you're stable. But she's a little bit more stable, a lot more stable than Johnny at this particular point in her life. And I believe that Masika is older than Johnny, too, as well. So we have that situation. Then we got Bow Wow in the studio. Who do, who do we see? We see none other than Little Mama, Little Mama. Little Mama's in the building, and basically, she's kind of, like, flirting with Bow Wow, like, she wants something with Bow Wow, like, you know, she she's ready for it, and Bow Wow was like, hold up, slow your roll, you know, I'm kind of, like, in a relationship and shit like that, you know, um, she was like, well, I'm here, and I'm here to stay, and I'm here to make myself known, and I want to get some money with you, Bow, I want to do this, and I want to do that, I want to make music, I'm working on my album, and both of us are in a good, mature, adult space, I was like, okay, but I don't believe Little Mama is Bow Wow's type. He likes them 20, 18 to 22. And I think she's over that range. And she has more of a head of, on her shoulder. And she's not desperate, desperate. So I think she's out of the <laughs> the listing. Unless they're going to play this out. But um, Bow Wow's kind of saying he got a girl. and kind of not saying he's in a, a relationship. And so Little Mama says, I'll see you around town. And Bow Wow says, ATO. <laughs> Like, what's going on with this? So, Bow Wow's going to have, what, Masika and Little Mama after him. Bow Wow says he's been knowing Masika since teenagers. And Masika says she's been knowing Bow Wow since she was a teenager. So, we're going to see how that, how all that goes down. I'm like, okay, we'll see. Mm -mm -mm. So, now we get to the, we get to New York. We get to the Songwriters Hall of Fame. JD's there. Um, Shania's there. Thank God she's there. She showed up because she's kind of pissed at her father because he hasn't been productive in helping her build her brand and all that other stuff. He's been putting her on hold and doing other things. But she was there. She was happy to support her father. And it's all good. And she also brings her little boyfriend, Willie. Then now we get ready for the after party. And but first we got Bow Wow in a hotel in New York with his girlfriend, you know, Kiyomi, and she's trying on her dress and everything. And she's rushing Bow Wow, telling him to hurry up and get dressed. And he don't like that shit because he ain't like when his mother was telling him what to do. He damn sure ain't gonna like when you tell him what to do. And he damn sure don't like Brat telling him what to do. You see how he went off because Brat was trying to tell him something to do. So now you trying to boss him around, you gonna be out the window, out the picture really, really soon. And um, <laughs> you see Bow Wow's Jordan sitting there on the table <laughs> and then Bow Wow's text texting Masik and saying he's trying not to be so messy and he's trying not to send mixed messages. So what's going on, Bow? You know, you and Masik got a little flirtiness going on and you attracted to each other. What, what is it? What's going on? Cause Masika would steal your man in the heart be beats. You know, you know how she stole, <laughs> she stole young bird quick, fast and with the hurry. So it is. Masika is Miss Steal Your Man. <laughs> um, so Mas so Masika is texting Bow and everything. They're trying to Bow Wow. Well, she said Bow asked her, begged her to come out here to Atlanta to be on the show, of course. And she got out of her contract with you know Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, and she got away from the production company. So now she's here on We TV with, with Bow Wow. So. 
we'll see how that goes. And then Pimpin shows up looking all good. He had a nice suit on too as well. And he was like, what's going on? Why is Kiyomi here? This is cramping my damn style. I feel like a third wheel. But I had to know to say, you guys got to get you guys some girlfriends because you guys are always whoring around every night. But well, that is you. Tonight, you're not whoring because she got your girl. <laughs> Uh, so they get ready they go to the you know after party everything's all good everything's cool everybody's there that you know um willie's there shania's there jd's there bow wow's there kiyomi's there big pimpin's there because big pimpin goes ev i call him big pimpin but his pimpin goes everywhere with bow you know and um little mama's there too as well and she sees bow bow sees her and he tells kiyomi hey listen i haven't seen little mama in a long time so let me go say hi to her already lying and being deceitful so bow wow you can't be trusting so that's why she's on you like a bird too like bird like a bird to shit or uh, fly to shit <laughs> so Bow Wow goes over there and talks to her I guess they're talking and you know little mama's touching and tapping because they've been knowing each other and Kiyomi was like I'm gonna beat her down I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that you better stop this I don't know what you doing and basically threatening Bow Wow and he was like calm down don't worry about it just chill out it's just little mama and, and Kiyomi was like, nah, I ain't coming down. What you think this is? You ain't going to be talking to no women in my face because I know how these girls get down. They want to laugh in your face, grin in your face, kiss you, hug you, send you naked pictures and all that other stuff. I don't know if they just your friends. I don't know if they're trying to get with you because, you know, you are you a commodity. You are something that people want. You are something that ladies want. So basically, she feels that Bow Wow is her property and she's trying to protect her property and her golden meal ticket from all the other women and so she got a battle on her hand peace of my one love signing off